Now that you know a little bit about differential equations and how to solve them, we're going to start getting into the applications. And one of those first applications is exponential growth and decay. At the end of this lesson, you'll be able to write and solve a differential equation to model growth or decay. Alrighty, in many applications, the rate of change of a variable y is proportional to the value of y. If y is a function of time t, the proportionality can be written as follows. So this is just saying the rate of change of a variable y. So how fast y is changing, and we learned that we can write that as dy dt, and that is proportional to the value of y. And if you remember when you're talking about something that's proportional, there's always some sort of constant times the value of y. So we're going to put equals ky. And then what I'm going to do from here, um, what we'll be trying to always do is solve this um, rate of change for y. So what I'm going to do, just like we have been doing um, when we're solving differential equations, is put a 1 under this and cross multiply. So I'm going to get 1 dy is equal to ky dt. And if I'm solving for this, I need my y's both on the same side. So I'm going to divide both sides by y. So I'm going to get dy over y is equal to k dt, and remember k is a constant, so we really don't care where it's at, and we are set, since I have my variables on different sides, we can take the integral of both sides. The integral of dy over y would be the same thing as du over u, so this will be the natural log of y. And then on the right side, since k is a constant, this would just be kt, because my variable is t, plus c. And then just how we have learned before, um, my logarithm loop, following it around, I'll get e to the kt plus c is equal to y. And remember, we can bump that, write that y out front. So we'll have y equals c e to the kt. So if I, if I was just trying to find y, given that the rate of change was proportional to the value of y, this would be the formula that I could use. Alrighty, let's take a look at example one. In some chemical reactions, the rate at which the amount of a substance changes with time is proportional to the amount present. So I could write a, a differential equation due to that. However, um, this example nicely gave me what that would. For the change of gluconolactone into gluconic acid, for example, this would be the differential equation that goes with it, where T is measured in hours. And then here would be the example. If there are 100 grams of this gluconolactone present, when T equals zero, how many grams will be left after the first hour? So what we need to do, we know how fast the level of the amount of substance is changing, but what we need to do is find out how, how much would there be, or how many grams would there be. So what we're going to be doing is solving this differential equation. So I'm going to go ahead and write it down. dy dt is equal to negative 0.6y. I'm going to put a 1 underneath, cross multiply, so I'll get 1 dy is equal to negative 0.6y dt. I need my y's on the same side, so I'm just going to divide by y. We're not going to do anything with the negative 0.6. So I'm now going to have dy over y equals negative 0.6 dt. I'm ready to take the integral of both sides. The integral of dy over y is the natural log of y. And then the integral of negative 0.6 would just be negative 0.6t plus c. Uh, again, we could just do my logarithm loop here. So I'll get e to the negative 0.6t plus c is equal to y. And again, we know that we can write the c out front. So I get y equals c e to the negative 0.6t. That will give me how many grams are present after any number of hours that they give me. And this specific formula says how many grams will be left after the first hour. So we're going to let t equals 1. Well, actually, we can't do that yet because you'll notice I do not know what c is. So I am going to use what they told me. They told me that there are 100 grams, so y would be 100 when t equals 0. So 100 equals c e to the negative 0.6 times 0. Negative 0.6 times 0 is 0. e to the 0 is 1 which means c equals 100. So I'm going to have y equals 100 e to the negative 0.6t. Now I can use that equation to figure out how many grams will be left after the first hour. So to figure that out, you can just plug 1 in for my t. And if I get out my calculator and figure that out, there would be 54.881 grams of the substance remaining. So hopefully now you're somewhat familiar with solving a differential equation where there's an application involved.